husband has this thing with Facebook Marketplace. He's always buying random stuff off there, and while we've had some weird interactions in the past, nothing prepared me for this one. It started with him finding a truck listed for a really good price. He spent a few days messaging back and forth with the seller, talking about all the work the guy had done on it. The seller seemed normal enough, friendly, knew his stuff, answered all my husband's questions. After talking, my husband asked to see the truck in person and take it for a test drive. Pretty standard. The guy agreed, and my husband suggested to meet at a neutral, safe location. We've had enough online deals to know meeting up in random neighborhoods can be sketchy. But after my husband sent that message, the guy just read it and did not respond. Hours passed, and it was starting to get late in the day. Then, finally, the guy replied, saying he couldn't meet anywhere else and that we had to come to his place. He gave us the address. The address didn't show up properly on Google Maps, though. It came up as an empty field, surrounded by some streets with a few houses. My husband messaged him back, saying it looked like the middle of nowhere, and asked if he could explain. The guy said, Oh, Google is wrong. That's my shop. It's a little back there, but that's where I keep the truck. Weird, but okay. My husband asked if we could meet him around 6pm. Again, the guy just read the message and didn't respond. It was getting closer to 6, so my husband messaged again, asking if they were still on. Finally, the guy replied, saying he was at work and couldn't meet until after 9pm. At this point, my husband was getting frustrated. He told the guy 9pm was too late and that they could just meet up another day. But suddenly, the guy changed his mind. He said 6pm would work after all, and that we should come over. I wasn't thrilled about going to a place that didn't even show up on the map, but my husband seemed fine with it, so we hopped in the car and headed out. When we got to the area, it was exactly like Google Maps had shown. Just a big empty field. No buildings in sight. Nothing that looked like a shop. My husband texted the guy, letting him know that we were there. The guy responded with this long list of directions on how to get through the area and find his shop. But the directions were bizarre. He wanted us to drive way off the main roads, far away from the nearby houses. When we cross-checked his directions with Google Maps, there wasn't anything showing up where he was telling us to go. No buildings, no shops, just more empty land. And at that point, my husband wasn't feeling great about this either. He texted the guy back, saying we weren't comfortable driving back there, and asked him to bring the truck up to the original meeting spot, the one we suggested in the first place. The guy read the message, but didn't respond. We sat there in the car for 15 minutes, waiting. Finally, my husband told him that we were leaving. And that's when the guy started spamming us with messages. Wait, I'm bringing it now. And then, just as we were driving away, that was you in the, he described our car, come back. That was when I really started to freak out. How did he know exactly what our car looked like? We hadn't even mentioned the make and color. It was like he was watching us. We did not respond and just kept driving. But the guy kept messaging us for days afterward, begging us to come back saying we should check out the truck, refusing to meet anywhere else except that creepy empty lot. We blocked him after a while, but I still get the chills thinking about what might have happened if we had followed his directions. It was definitely one of the scariest experiences we've had. There's no way that guy just wanted to sell a truck that night. I was selling an iPhone XS on Facebook Marketplace the other day, trying to make some extra cash before my wedding. I've sold a bunch of stuff from the same parking lot of a nearby sports club, and it's always been safe. It's busy, there's daylight, and there are cameras everywhere. I figured nothing could go wrong, right? Well, I was wrong. 
I agree to meet this buyer around 6 p.m. He messaged me. Seemed like a normal deal. No red flags. He asked a few questions about the phone. Nothing unusual. When I pull into the parking lot, I see this young kid, maybe late teens or early 20s, standing there. He waves at me like it's all good. He looks like your average dude. Nothing that screamed trouble. So I park and walk over to him. He pulls out a wad of cash from his pocket, flashes it at me, so I think everything's on track. I hand him the phone, box, papers, and all that, letting him check it out. I've done this routine a dozen times and did always go smoothly. Then, in a split second, things go south. He reaches back into his pocket, and I think he's grabbing the cash again. But nope. Out comes a knife. He presses it right against my side, near my appendix, and just says, Hand it over, bitch. At that moment, I froze. I'm supposed to get married in a week, and all I can think about is not dying in some parking lot over a phone. So I hand it over. I figure the phone's not worth my life. I didn't try to be a hero, but the adrenaline kicked in, and as soon as he grabbed the phone, I ran after him. He didn't bolt right away. Instead, he walked quickly to his car parked on the main street. Now I'm thinking maybe I can get the plate number or something. But the second he's in the car, he speeds off and I lose sight of him. I called the cops immediately, told them exactly what happened. I even pointed out the CCTV camera right there in the parking lot. I mean, the whole thing must have been caught on video, no question. I figured they'd be all over it, right? Nope. They did sweet fuck all. The officer I spoke to was barely paying attention. Just took a statement and said they'd look into it. A couple of days go by and I'm pissed. No updates from the cops. Nothing. So I decided to post about it in a local community group on Facebook. Warning others about this kid and what happened. And that's when the floodgates opened. Turns out, I wasn't the only one. A bunch of other people commented saying the same thing happened to them in the exact same area. Same kid, same knife, same routine. But no one had said anything publicly about it before. If someone had spoken up earlier, maybe I would have been more careful. Maybe I wouldn't have been robbed. I'm out a thousand dollar phone, and I feel like an idiot for not catching on sooner. And the worst part, the cops still don't seem to care. They haven't followed up with me, haven't checked the footage, nothing. It's like they've just written it off as another minor incident. The whole thing makes me mad, not just because I lost the phone, but because it could have been avoided. I trusted that the cops would do something, but they don't seem to give a shit unless it's something serious. And now this kid's probably out there pulling the same stunt on someone else, because no one's doing a damn thing about it. And anyway... Moral of the story, don't trust the cameras, and don't assume the cops are going to do anything to help. If you're selling stuff online, just be careful. This whole thing could have been so much worse, and I'm just glad I walked away with nothing but a lighter wallet. I've been selling crystals on Facebook Marketplace for a while now. Nothing big, but... I've built up a decent list of repeat customers, and I make enough to cover some bills. Most of the time, the people I meet are nice, and transactions go smoothly. That was until this one guy came along, and completely flipped my world upside down. It started like any other sale. He messaged me about a set of crystals I had listed, amethyst, quartz, and some citrine, and seemed genuinely interested. He was polite at first, and we agreed to meet at the local coffee shop. But the day of the meet, he did not show. No big deal, I've dealt with flakes before. I messaged him, and he gave me some excuse about a family emergency. Whatever, stuff happens, so we rescheduled. The second time, same thing. No show, another lame excuse. This time, his car broke down. I was annoyed, but still willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. We set up a third meet, 
again at the same coffee shop. You can probably guess what happened next. He did not show. This time, I didn't even wait for his excuse. I messaged him and told him I couldn't hold the crystals for him any longer because I had other people who were interested and he had already wasted my time. That's when things took a turn for the worst. He lost it. I mean, completely lost it. The guy went off, sending me a flurry of messages, calling me names, telling me I was a scammer, that I had wasted his time. Oh, the irony. Then he said something that chilled me to the bone. I'm going to kill you and your daughter. I know where you live. I froze. My heart started pounding and I felt sick. I have a daughter in elementary school, and this guy clearly knew that. He must have looked at my Facebook profile because I had not mentioned anything about her in our chats. Then, as if that wasn't enough, he named the community I lived in. He did not have my exact address, but knowing the neighborhood was more than close enough. There are at least 50 communities within a reasonable radius of the coffee shop, so the fact that he knew Mayan wasn't just a lucky guess. I freaked out. I locked down my profile, deleted any photos that could give away more about where I live, and blocked him. But that did not stop the paranoia from creeping in. Every time I saw a car drive slowly down my street, I wondered if it was him. One day, a car I did not recognize kept circling the block, and I couldn't take it anymore. I called the cops. When the police arrived, I showed them the messages, fully expecting them to take the situation seriously. But no. They practically rolled their eyes at me. It was like they didn't care. They asked me what I had done to provoke him, like it was somehow my fault that this psycho was threatening to murder me and burn down my house. I'm a single mom living in a trailer park, so I guess in their eyes, I wasn't worth the trouble. It was disgusting. They even suggested I might be lying to get attention. Seriously. I was sitting there, scared out of my mind for my kid's safety, and they turned it back on me like I was the one who had done something wrong. I wasn't about to let that slide though. I went down to the police station the next day and reported the officers for their ridiculous behavior. Eventually, they sent a female cop out to talk to me. She actually listened. I showed her the messages again, explained everything that had happened, and she took it seriously. She put in a request for extra patrols in the area that night and they did send a car to check the neighborhood a few times. I also gave her a partial license plate from the car I'd seen circling, but they couldn't track it down. For the next few days, I stayed with a friend. I didn't feel safe at home, not with this guy still out there. I've never heard from him again, and thankfully nothing came of his threats. But I can't shake the feeling that he's still out there somewhere, watching. It messes with me big time. People can truly be unhinged. What should have been a simple crystal sale turned into the most terrifying experience of my life. And to think, it all started with someone who couldn't be bothered to show up to a damn coffee shop. I recently had a really strange and honestly creepy experience selling something on Facebook Marketplace. So, my son is six now, and I was doing a bit of clean out, getting rid of clothes that no longer fit him. One of the items was this cute little jacket he used to wear when he was four. It still looked great, barely worn, so I figured I'd list it for cheap on Marketplace. I wasn't getting much interest, which wasn't surprising because... Well, it was just a kid's jacket. Then, one evening, I get a message from this guy saying he's interested in buying it for his son. I'm immediately suspicious, though. I have this weird habit of checking out people's profiles before I agree to meet them. It's just a safety thing, I guess. Anyway, I check his profile, and this guy looks to be in his 60s. No photos of a young boy anywhere. It's mostly just him at what looks like fishing trips or sitting in his backyard. I know that doesn't necessarily mean anything, 
He could still have a son, or maybe a grandson, but something about it just made me uncomfortable. I debated whether I should respond, but I also just wanted to get rid of the jacket, and no one else was showing any interest. So, against my better feeling, I messaged him back and agreed to meet up. We were set to meet up for the next day at the Walmart parking lot. It's a public place, and I figured there's no harm. Everything was normal at first. He pulled up in an older truck, got out, and walked over to me. He seemed friendly enough, a little quiet, but nothing too alarming. I handed him the jacket, and that's when things took a weird turn. He didn't even really look at the jacket at first. Instead, he took it, held it up to his face, and just sniffed it. Like, really sniffed it. I mean, I get that sometimes clothes smell like detergent or whatever, but this was different. He took these deep, long inhales, like he was trying to breathe in the scent as much as possible. It was very unsettling. I just stood there, kind of frozen, not knowing what to say. After a few seconds of this, he finally looked at me and said, Thank you so much, in this really soft, almost emotional voice. Then he got back into his truck and drove off without another word. I was freaked the hell out. I just stood there in the Walmart parking lot, processing what just happened. Later that night though, I got a message from him again. He said something along the lines of, Do you have any more clothes of your sons that you're trying to sell? That's when I knew something was definitely off. It wasn't like he just asked in a casual way. It almost felt desperate. And I did not reply. I blocked him immediately. I couldn't stop thinking about it after that though. The way he sniffed the jacket. How eager he was to get more of my son's clothes. I don't know if he actually had a son. But honestly at this point, I doubt it. And I keep thinking about what he could have wanted with a jacket that belonged to a four-year-old boy. Was he just some collector of kids' clothes? Or was it something way more disturbing? The whole thing has made me really worry of selling stuff online. Especially when it involves anything related to my kid. I guess the moral of the story is to always trust your gut. Even if it seems silly at the time. If someone gives you a bad vibe, just don't go through with it. Selling a $10 jacket is not worth feeling this uneasy and creeped out afterward. Last year, I went through one of the most horrifying experiences of my life. I had broken up with my boyfriend about two months before this all went down. He was controlling emotionally abusive and just overall toxic. I had finally gotten the courage to just leave him, and I thought that was the end of it. I had even gotten a restraining order because he wouldn't stop showing up at my job, blowing up my phone and making threats. Things were supposed to be getting better, but they got so much worse. It all started one night around 4am. My phone buzzed and I assumed it was just some random spam message. I did not think much of it and went back to sleep, but it kept happening. Every few minutes, another text would come through, then a call. By 4.30am, I had over 20 notifications from numbers that I did not recognize. That's when I got curious and decided to look. The text that I read made my skin crawl. Most of the messages were disgusting. Guys asking me for nudes, saying things like they wanted to bend me over, or asking me how much it would cost to hook up. The calls were worse, with some leaving creepy, breathy voicemails. I was absolutely mortified. I immediately thought maybe my number had been leaked somewhere, but I couldn't figure out how or why. I spent the rest of that night just blocking the numbers, but the texts and calls did not stop. The next day, I mentioned this to a friend, and she suggested I try scanning my phone number on Facebook and Google. At first, I thought this was a long shot. 
I did not think that was something people actually did. But I did it anyway. And that's when I found it. There, on Facebook Marketplace, was a photo of me in lingerie. It wasn't anything scandalous, just a picture I'd sent to my ex when we were still together. It was tasteful, covering everything, but my face was visible, and the caption was horrifying. And I don't remember the exact wording because I was in shock at the time, but it was something about me wanting to be bent over and railed. And right there, under the picture, was my phone number. My heart dropped. I knew immediately who did this. It had to be him, my ex. He was the only person who had that picture. I felt so violated. The first thing I did was screenshot everything. I was already terrified of him, and this just made it worse. I went straight to the police station, hoping that they'd be able to help me, but it did not go how I hoped. They listened to my story, looked at the evidence that I had, and told me there was nothing they could do. Because I couldn't prove it was him, they could not prosecute. Even though I knew it was him, there was no direct link tying him to the post, so their hands were tied. I left the police station feeling defeated and even more scared. I had a restraining order, but it felt worthless now. I reached out to a few close friends and asked them to report the post on Facebook. After enough people reported it, the post finally got taken down, but the damage was already done. Even after the post was gone, I kept getting messages for days. Random men texting and calling at all hours, and every time my phone buzzed, I felt sick to my stomach. Eventually, I had to change my phone number because it was the only way to stop the harassment. I spent the next few days updating everyone, family, friends, work, about my new number and explaining why. It was so embarrassing to say the least, but it was the only way to get any peace. And even though the call stopped, I couldn't shake the feeling of being so violated. I had trusted someone with that picture and he had used it to humiliate and degrade me. I got angry and disgusted. How could someone be that cruel? Doing something like that to a person, especially someone you claim to care about, is unforgivable. To this day, the whole experience haunts me. I'm extra careful about who I trust, especially with anything personal. And whenever I hear about someone going through something similar, it makes my blood boil. No one deserves to be treated that way. Hey, what's up guys? It's Spooky. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You survived. If you did not know, I have an Instagram. Follow me on there so we can connect. I also have a Patreon. On there, you'll have direct access to me and can see the upcoming videos polls, and soon-to-be exclusive stories only shared on there. If that's something that interests you, please consider joining. That's all I have for you guys tonight. Stay spooky, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.